Today we cover Hofal. Hofal? Hofal. However you pronounce it. This is the stem that covers causative action in the passive voice. That's right. It is the passive counterpart to Hifil. Hifil, Hofal. Hifil, Hofal. So it's going to share similar characteristics of what we've already learned with the Hifil, but the vowel pointings will be different. Now again, causative action is to cause something. Okay? Cause to kill. But with the passive voice, we have to add something like to be. Cause to be killed. And this way, the subject receives the action. And that's the hofal. Now the hofal doesn't occur very often, so we're actually only learning a trimmed down version uh, where we're not covering some of the uh, even more rare components. We're not gonna be learning the imperative or the infinitives. The thing about the hofal is there's actually two different classes. There's the O class, hence the name hofal, but there's also a U class. As it turns out in modern Hebrew, they don't call it the hofal, they call it the hufal. Well, that helps us because both are present in biblical Hebrew. So in the perfect, and we'll compare it here to the Hithil, but the U-class Hofal, perfect Huktal, Huktala, Huktalta, Huktalt, Huktalti, Huktalu, Huktaltem, Huktalten, Huktalnu. In the O class, it is a comet's hatuf. Haktal, Haktala, Haktalta, Haktalt, Haktalti, Haktalu, Haktaltem, Haktalten, Haktalnu. The comet's hatuf is O class. It looks like a comet's, except it's in a closed syllable, making it an O class instead of an A class. It's pronounced the same. Make no mistake. It's pronounced the same. So the key diagnostic markers of the perfect in the hofal, you have your hey prefix, but instead of a uh, a heric, you're either going to have a kibitz or a comet tatuf. The other diagnostic marker is we don't have an unchangeable long vowel like we did in Hithil with the heric yod. Instead, we have pathak. So the details are in the name. Hofal, hufal. Well, you have the H, you have the U or the O, and then you have an A, All right? So that's what we're looking for, primarily. The same is true in the imperfect minus the he prefix. Why? Because the imperfect has its own conjugation prefix. So with the U class, we have yuktal, tuktal, tuktal, tuktali, ektal, uktulu, Tuktalna, Tuktalu, Tuktalna, Nuktal. With the O class, Yaktal, Taktal, Taktal, Taktalu, Aktal, Yaktalu, Taktalna, Taktalu, Taktalna, Naktal. So again, just as the name suggests, we'll have either the U or the O plus an A. There's just no hey at the beginning because of the imperfect prefixes. Skipping the imperative and skipping the infinitives, we move right into the participle and we're gonna see the same thing 
as the perfect and imperfect with the U and O class initial vowels, the pathak is going to lengthen to a comets. So we have, and, and we are using a mem prefix to signal the participle here. Muktal, Mukteleth, Muktalim, Muktaloth. That's the U class. The O class, Maktal, Makteleth, Maktalim, Maktaloth. So, main prefix plus the U or the O class vowel. And then in the stem vowel, you'll see a comments. With weak verbs, there's no real differences here. With first gutturals, we have our hey prefix plus O class vowel, and we retain our pathak stem vowel. With the participle, the stem vowel lengthens to comets. Now, we might see some variations to say goal, but uh, this is all very consistent with everything we've learned. With third hey, we still get our hey prefix and our O-class vowel, but no stem vowel. Or if we do have any sort of stem vowel, we're gonna see a sere yod or a segel yod. With first noon, we will have our hey prefix plus a U-class kibitz, and we'll see our pathak stem vowel, and we'll see the noon assimilate. In the participle, we'll have our mem U class and then the the comet stem vowel with the noon assimilate all very straightforward in first yod as we've seen before the yod lengthens to a vav and because it's it's preferring a u class vowel instead of kibitz we see shirik so the vav becomes a shirik and, and we retain our, our pathak. In the participle, we have mame, shirik, and then we also have our comets. No surprises here. The biconsonantal also uses the shirik plus a, com uh, plus a pathak, and the participle has the mame, shirik, plus a comets. No surprises there. Geminate does the same thing. Hey, Shirik, Pathak. Or in the participle, Mame, Shirik, Comets. Now, Hebrew can do something called a, a hendiadis. In Greek, that means one from two. So it's the idea of using two words to convey a single idea. We do this in English, right? Uh, the weather was nice and warm okay that means comfortable the idea the single idea is comfortable but we're using two words nice as well as warm to convey that idea this is hendiatus hebrew does the same thing it uses two independent words combined with the conjunction vav to do the exact same thing now hebrew likes to do it with verbs it can do it with nouns, but it likes to do it with verbs. In these situations, the second verb bears the main force. The first verb will act or be translated as an adverb. Vayochal, vayishta, vayashav, vayishchav. So literally, and he ate and drink and yashav and shachav so and he and lay down shachav is lay down and it's not yashav it's shuv to do again and to do again he laid down so to do again is going to be functioning as an adverb and so to to translate that you would actually use shachav to lay down and then the adverb again 
he ate, he drank, and then he laid down again. Now, it doesn't have to be that way, where the second verb carries the main force. It's often how it works. All right. Well, that was pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Hofal, the passive counterpart to Hifil. Thank you for joining this week. We will see you next week for Hithpael. Until then. <laughs>